Okay, everybody, so we're back. A couple of projects today. One's gonna be for this trailer ramp system to go up over those wheel well arches, but I don't think I got enough one by 12s. Um, we'll find out how much I need, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need more. I forgot to take measurements when I went to the store, and so I just took a guess. I'm like, oh, those fender wells are probably about 40 inches in length. I was way off, they're about 62-ish. So, I'm gonna have to probably get a little bit more lumber than I thought I was gonna need. But we did also get some materials to get this hoist system done today as well. So hopefully guys, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Also, this is your last day officially. When you see this video, it is the last day to get 10X entries towards winning this truck plus $5,000 cash. Like we said, Kayla from New Jersey won that truck with $5,000 and you could be taking home this 55,000 mile Four wheel drive, W350, limited edition, 12 valve Cummins, five speed manual. There's just so much going for this truck that's just so stellar. Last day for the 10X entries, but the giveaway itself ends on May 7th. So if you can't get in today, it does go on until May 7th, which is about a little over three weeks. Yeah, until this giveaway will actually be over. Stay tuned, let's get into the video. Actually, the first little project that I wanna work on is pretty unrelated to working on the shop or the trailer it's going to be working on the pretty much my wife's little i don't know what you want to call it it's like a little manure wagon that i threw together for yesterday but it was like a one day type of situation make it a little bit nicer and when i say nice i'm talking at least more functional i don't know how nice it's going to be but it'll be more functional and it'll kind of serve the purpose a little bit better so this is what we have going on right now it's a bolt that's not the right length so it's actually not fully tightened in it just that's where the threading stops and then we've got this little utility hook for like hanging lights and accessories crap in your shop and like hanging ex extension cords on and stuff it's not a weight bearing type of hook so it, it's like, yeah, it's goofy, it works. She hauled, I don't know, probably 75 pounds of manure at a time, like four trips back all the way to the woods back in there. Um, and it did fine, but I wanna actually make it more durable, a little more weight bearing and stuff like that. So it'll actually serve its purpose a little bit better. So we've actually got some little brackets here that I'm gonna put in a couple of places to kind of help strengthen and reinforce this little trailer tongue hitch portion of it. We've got the proper length bolt, that way it can be actually tight and snug and this thing doesn't pivot around so much, but it still will have a little bit of movement because I want it to have a little bit of movement. And then here we've got a little bit better solution for a hook, something that's gonna be a little bit more durable and work a little bit better. Okay, now, there's gonna be a lot of you that think this is goofy, as I'll get out, but guess what? It works. So, we've got the trailer, and before you guys start critiquing this, this is a very obvious DIY, poor man's, I guess you could say, style of just like a makeshift um, tongue slash hitch for this little wagon here. And I put some four inch screws holding in this, and I centered it you know, one and three quarters for top and bottom and marked it so that the pin hook is centered. Now these are a little bit too long. All I'm gonna do, I did on all the other ones, but all I'm gonna do is put, drill another hole here, drill another hole there, and then actually fasten screws into here as well. That's what I did on all the sides. As you can see all the other brackets, I just drilled an extra hole and then put it in that way. Got that bolt ran and it just sits flush. Like it just sits flush with the thing and that was tight as tight as I could get it with a lock washer and a washer on each side yeah I mean it works I mean if she uses a stupid utility hook that was like I thought it was screwed in like an inch and a half it was actually only like a half inch screw down in top I mean she should be she should be fine with this for at least a while if it breaks we'll make her another okay on to the next part of the project for today I need to work on this beam structuring and I don't know guys I'm kind of torn on what to do but I think I have an idea of what what I, how I want this to go. So um, I'm gonna start by running a couple lags through this post right here. I'm gonna run one through the two by 12, it was two by 10, I mean, to the back of the post. And then I'm gonna do another one that's through the two by 10, the rafter and the post. And then we're going to move on to 
the far side and run two of lags, and then I'm gonna run the two by 10 on the back side, which is just gonna be fastening this two by 10 through the rafter into the other two by 10 and sandwiching them together. So let's get to it and let's see how much progress we can get on this. <laughs> beam in place I'm calling it a beam because it's pretty freaking heavy duty now so what we have is essentially a 2 by 10 in the front fastened to the post one of the bolts are just driven straight through the 2 by 10 directly into the post and bolted and tightened in on the back side and then the one above it is fastened through the 2 by 10 through the rafter and through the post where it's notched in that portion up there and Tightened in with an impact, I use the air gun. And then I have two bolts, one big heavy duty 5 8 bolt there and there in this portion of the beam that is separate from the other side, but it's just fastening the two by 10 on the back and the front and sandwiching that beam together and holding it tight. And then over here, what you have as well is I ran a bolt here and there as well for this portion of the two by 10 on each side as well as the beam in the middle because of course, you know, like that big staple plate looking thing there, that's just connecting two separate, you know, boards obviously running across from there to the wall. So I thought having two big bolts on each side would be good to help align that beam and keep it strengthened with these two by tens. And then of course on this side are a little bit more extreme. Um, what I ended up doing was I ran two 10 inch bolts through the two by 10 so you can see right there, up on the top, right there. And I ran them through not only the two by 10, but the rafter for one of them. And then the other one was just directly to the post. One through the rafter, then through the, the four by four post, then through a two by six that's there, as well as our ladder, the two by four, which is fastened in with like tons of four screws top to bottom. But anyways, it's all lagged together just because the ladder's there. There's not really anything I can do about it now. Like that's where it sits. And it's it's tight, it's solid, it's not going anywhere. I mean, it's, it's not. So um, I might put some, I've already got four big four screws along this side just to kind of hang it while I was doing the um, bolts. I might run a few more, probably four more just in four different spots than I already have them. And then uh, hang our hoist up. That's where we got today with the hoist and beam set up. And just to be clear, that chain was not my plan to use for now for the whole hoist holding device. Um, that's just the only chain that I had on hand, which is a brand new 20 foot chain. And uh, so I just wrapped it around twice on each side and then whatever, I don't know. That's all I have for now. And um, that's not my permanent solution but I don't really have any other options right now. But if anybody has any better suggestions in terms of what to use, I'm not gonna be using this hoist right away. So if anybody has a better suggestion before I use the hoist to pull the bed off this truck, let me know down in the comments below, what would you do? Now I do need to go let my camera battery charge up a little bit because it is pretty much dead. So I'm gonna go hook this up on the charger, but I'm gonna start to cut some boards for the trailer modification that we're gonna be making. And then I'll get back to you guys once everything's cut and ready to go on. We did not get as far as I was hoping with for the trailer because I was short probably 12 boards, so that's great. Here was my objective for this trailer protection idea that I had, and I think it's gonna work. Some people might not think it's gonna work, but I think it should work. And let me show you the concept. So I got a bunch of one by 12s, and as you can see, my concept was make the first board about 110 inches, which would take it right to the outer edge of this tie down point here, as well as the outer edge of this tie down point here. And my thought process behind this is if I want to, I can make a connecting point or a board or a piece of wood, like where a section of two by four on its side 
not for like structure or support, but on the side here, once these are all fastened down together, and I'm not screwing anything to the deck of the trailer, mind you, I'm just gonna fasten these boards together tighter in multiple points, that way they are compressed and tight, and then I can just like drop this up on here. Uh, but anyway, so, put this on here, I could run a two by four along this side here, and then also run a, another one that's on the underside that just goes straight down into here, that way you can kinda like, set this whole set of ramps and drop it down into those slots and that way you have it to where it won't you know shift around and move around or this would probably work just as fine and probably be a little bit better so you don't accidentally have tire that overhangs and smacks that two by four we could just put a two by four like through here to here and with it being up against this fender yeah it might nick it up over the years but it won't allow the ramps to slide away forward. And if we do another one on this side, if we're backing off, it won't allow the ramps to slide back. And so what this is gonna enable the truck to do, which I, I need more boards, I need about five more. But even though these are heavy, I mean, this is a heavy, this is gonna be a heavy contraption. As heavy as it's gonna be, it's gonna make it way safer and easier to get a truck if it has stance like the Ford as an example sitting right there or my wife's white truck if it's a truck like that and we do have to haul it on this trailer it'll be able to go gradually climb up these 1x12s go over this fender and gradually come back down and then of course we can slide these forward so they're up out of the way and then pull the truck up on and tie it down I hope that makes sense I know it's not like some incredible latest and greatest thing but i thought it was a concept that if we absolutely had to move a modified truck which most of the time we're not to be clear most of the time when we're going to be hauling a truck it's going to be hauling a truck that's stock that we're picking up to work on our channel most of the time the winners fly in or drive in in a rental car they pick up their trucks and then they go that way we're really not going to have to haul an aftermarket truck on the trailer for the most part but this is like a just in case type of deal we do go pick up a truck that's on stance that wheels or something it'll fit on the trailer for the most part though a stock 7.3, a stock 2nd gen, a stock 1st gen, a stock, you know, whatever. Most all the stock trucks are going to be within that 82 inch width or very, very close to it. And it'll roll onto the trailer just fine. But that's going to be a wrap on today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this little vlog style of just doing a bunch of little stuff that I had to do around the farm today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash that thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that red button. Turn it gray so you don't miss out on any of the content. And also, if you want to enter to win this truck, your 10X Century deal ends tonight at midnight. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Every $5 you spend gets you 10 entries to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. It's a 1989 W350 single rear wheel, five speed manual, four wheel drive, 12 valve Cummins with only 55,000 original miles on it. So if you want to take this baby home, go to lmpgear.com and get entered today.